Hello Chem 30s and welcome to um, class. Today we're going to learn about oxidation states, that's section 13.3. There will be two installments, so we're going to uh, worry about part one today where we're just learning how to assign oxidation numbers. Part two is going to be about how to balance with oxidation numbers, which is a, a, just a different strategy of how to balance redox equation. Okay. So let's just quickly take a look at what the definition is. So the oxidation state of an atom in an entity is defined as the apparent net electric charge that would that it would have if electron pairs and covalent bonds uh, belonged ent uh, entirely to the more electronegative atom. What the heck is going on? What does that mean? All that means is, listen, things are going to want to move. If you take a look at your uh, data booklet at the periodic table, you'll notice that things have charges. Oxygen, for example, has a negative two charge. Why? Why does it do that? It needs to fill the outermost shell. So keeping that in mind and just kind of tweaking our understanding of that, we're going we're gonna to learn how to, how to assign oxidation numbers. Here's an example of water molecule. In this water molecule, oxygen has an oxidation of, uh, state of negative two or two negative, oxidation state is just a different way to express what is going on. Did something lose or gain electrons? If you take a look over here, here's your oxygen. It's gained uh, these two electrons. So it has an oxidation state of negative two. Hydrogen, on the other hand, has an oxidation state of plus one. So it actually lost electrons. Sometimes it gains electrons. Hydrogen is funny. It's one of those things where it does, depending if it's, um, if it's in the first part of a molecule like hydrochloric acid and if it's part of a um, the second part. So if it's an, it could be negative one or it could be positive one. So each oxygen atom has eight protons and eight electrons. That's when we're talking about the atom. Remember atoms are neutral, right? Uh, but if the oxygen atom gets to count the two hydrogen electrons, the red dots, in the two shared uh, shared pairs, as its own, then it has eight protons but 10 electrons, leaving an apparent net charge of negative two, which you understand because you understand about how atoms t become ions, but now you have to just rearrange your thinking a little bit. Each hydrogen atom in this case has a, a one proton, so one thing that's positively charged, but with no additional electrons since oxygen has already counted it. That leaves hydrogen with an apparent net charge of plus one in this particular case. Because hydrogen is interesting, it can actually have a negative one charge depending on what is going on. So an oxidation number is a positive or negative number corresponding to the oxidation state assigned to an atom in a covalently bonded entity based on arbitrary rules. Arbitrary rules means like rules that are kind of like, I don't know, they're rules, but they're they're all based on mostly uh, experimental data. So let's take a look at some examples. Now these you have to know. All atoms in elements, this is really important. If you're talking about elements in uh, atoms in elements, the oxidation number is zero. So in this case here, sodium metal has an oxidation number of zero. Do not confuse sodium metal with sodium ion. A sodium ion is an A plus that has a charge or uh, oxidation number of plus one. Chlorine in, chlorine gas, so it's a gas, it's, it's, it's an element, it's still zero, okay? Hydrogen in all compounds except hydrogen in hydrides, okay, so in all compounds it's a plus one. And if it's a hydride, so if it's found as the second part of a compound of an uh, ionic compound it has a charge of negative one. This is a rule that is always, it's always going to do this, always, always. Oxygen is another one of those things that we can predict pretty much all the time. Oxygen in all compounds have an oxidation number of negative two, except for in peroxides. In this case it'll have an oxidation of negative one. I'm not going to give you a, um, a complex thing on an assessment. Just understand that oxygen is always negative two. In peroxides, it's an exception. It has a, a, a electron, sorry, oxidation number of negative one. All monatomic ions, that's the charge on an ion. What that means is if you're dealing with an ion, the oxidation number is the charge on the ion. Simple as that. 
Okay, so keeping that in mind, uh, the sum of the oxid name, uh, oxidation numbers for a compound is zero. I'll talk about that, that's really important. Let's just compare that to the second bullet. The sum of the oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion is equal to the charge on the ion. Okay, cool. What that means is I, if I compare NaCl, uh, okay, that has a total oxidation number of zero because it's, let's just say in this case, it's a solid. It's a compound, okay? If I compare that to a polyatomic ion, this is not a compound. That's an ion. It has a total total oxidation number of negative 1 or 1 negative. And that's always the case for a polyatomic ion. Sulfate, for example, the sulfate ion is has a charge of negative 2. The total is going to be negative 2. Why do we care about the total? That's to come. This method only works if there is only one unknown after, uh, after referring to the above table. Okay, what does that mean is if I have, I'll have to explain it because if I talk to you about it without showing you, you're going to be like, what? So here's an example. What is the oxidation number? What is the oxidation number of the carbon in methane? Okay, so it's only asking for the carbon. If there was another substance like sulfur, for example, where it, we don't know what sulfur is, remember in the table previous, we know oxygen, we know for hydrogen. We can't, I can't ask you to find carbon and then ask you to find sulfur in the same compound, for example, because we're just basically going to learn how to solve for x. We're just basically going to take the concept of algebra to solve for one particular thing. So we're going to refer, keep in mind what's going on for table one. We're going to assign oxidation numbers of plus one to the hydrogen because we know that's a thing, right? And then we're going to apply some simple math. So I'm going to walk you through it. Since a methane molecule is electrically neutral, then the oxidation number of the one carbon atom and the four hydrogen atoms must equal to zero. So this, this I've added an x, a variable, to the carbon, because that's what we're looking for. And for the hydrogen, we know that each hydrogen has a uh, oxidation number of plus one. And there are four of them. Okay. It's going to equal to zero because methane is uh, methane gas. It's it's an it's a thing. It's it's not an uh, a polyatomic ion. It's an entity. Okay, we're solving for x, and uh, we're going to be use al we're going to use algebra because we're going to isolate the x, and that's going to give you the uh, oxidation number for carbon. So, if I'm I'm just going to do this. So x plus a positive 4 is equal to 0. I'm going to isolate the x. I have to add a negative 4, right, to one side and to the other. This cancels out. x is equal to negative 4. And that's your oxidation number for carbon, and that's your oxidation number for hydrogen. Now, when you're using oxidation numbers, we want the oxidation number for only one. Notice that there's four here. We, we multiply it by four to figure out the answer for carbon. So the oxidation number of carbon is negative four. How do we write this? The oxidation numbers for each atom go on the very top. Okay, so if you don't understand, that's okay. We're going to go through another example. What is the oxidation number? So we're looking for the oxidation number of manganese that's what we're looking for in a permanganate ion. Let's take a look at this. This is an ion. It is not um, a compound. It's not a molecule. A compound would be something like sodium chloride. A molecule would be something like methane. Because this is an ion, it's not equal. To, the total isn't equal to zero anymore. It's actually equal to negative one. Okay, just keep that in mind. After referring to the table one, to table one, we assign an oxidation number of negative two to the oxygen because it's not a peroxide. Since a permanganate ion has a charge of one negative, then the oxidation number of the one mag uh, manganese atom and the four oxygen atoms must equal to negative one. Why? Because it's an ion, and here it is. It's telling you, it's whatever plus whatever is going to equal to negative one, and 
Where did the negative one charge come from? Data booklet, the permanganate ion has a charge of negative one. So you don't have to really think about it, we just have to find things. So let's figure this out. Uh, your manganese, we're looking for that. I'm going to attribute it uh, with a variable of x. There are four oxygens. How are there four oxygens? Because it's right there, right? Each oxygen is going to have an uh, oxidation number of negative 2, and it's going to equal to negative 1. It's not going it to equal to 0 because it's not a compound. It's an ion. It has an ion charge of negative 1, so the total has to equal negative 1. So let's do the math. We have x plus negative 8, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, is equal to negative 1. If I'm going to go again, x plus negative 8 plus 8, so that cancels out, equals to 8 plus negative 1, which is equal to 7, positive 7. So there's your answer. Where do I put it? I put it here. And we also talk about the oxidation number of oxygen for one atom of oxygen. Okay, so far so good. It's actually kind of fun. How about sodium sulfate? There's two ways you could do this. I'm going to show you both ways. So now this is a compound made up of sodium and the sulfate ion. What is the oxidation number for sulfur? We are looking for the oxidation number of sulfur. So I'm going to show you one strategy and then I'm going to show you another strategy. We know the oxidation number of both sodium and oxygen and solve it algebraically. Because this is an ionic substance, I could dissociate it into your sodium and your sulfate, right? So let's take a look at, uh, for the sodium, it's a plus one charge. So for the sodium ion, right, there's two of them each with a plus one charge. How do I know it's a plus one charge? Because in the PR table, it's a plus one charge. Plus my X, X is my sulfur, right? Uh, plus oxygen is equal to zero because it's a compound. There are four oxygens. How do I know there's four oxygens? Tells you right here, look, there's four. Each of the oxygens has oxidation of no number of negative two because it's not a peroxide. It doesn't say peroxide. It just says sodium sulfate is equal to zero. Cool. Now I'm going to use my math skills. Two times positive one is two. There's my x and two times, uh, sorry, four times negative two is negative eight is equal to zero. Cool. Now I'm going to get rid of that, right? So there's what that's where the eight came from, and I still have two plus x is eight. Now I'm going to isolate my x by adding my uh, by adding a um, negative 2 or subtracting 2. 8, 8 subtract negative 2 is positive 6. So my sulfur in this case is positive 6. My 1 sodium is positive 1. And my for each oxygen is negative 2. Now that's a cool strategy. What I like to do, honestly, is to split it up. So I'll show you a different strategy. So in this strategy, what I could do is I can dissociate. If I dissociate, there are two sodium ions and one sulfate ion. Two sodium ions, do you notice that? Plus one sulfate ion. So I take this and I use this sulfate ion to find the sulfur. Because it's not asking me to find the sodium, it's asking me to find the oxidation number of sulfur. This, this time, SO4 is equal to negative two because it's an ion. So here's my negative two or two negative. I have my X, which Really, I'm not looking for sulfur. There are four oxygens, each at negative 2. Okay, Here's my x. I'm going to multiply 4 times negative 2 is going to be negative 8 is equal to 2 negative. Now, I'm going to add a positive 8. I'm going to add a positive. Oh, it's already there. I'm going to add a positive 8, which is going to give me an answer of plus 6. So, Six plus and two minus. So the answer is the same. It's still going to be a positive six, but it's just a different way. In this case, in this strategy here, I'm dissociating it. I'm ignoring this part because it's not asking for that. I'm taking this. I'm finding sulfur. Just make sure you know that it's equal to negative two. So a little information about just a little something, something about uh, redox in living organisms. 
I'm not testing you on this, this is just a little FYI. So the ability of carbon to take on different oxidation states, carbon has different oxidation states depending on the compound it's found in, is essential to life on Earth. Uh, the big guy thought of everything, just saying. Photosynthesis involves a series of reduction reactions. This is really important, by the way, sorry to interrupt myself, but photosynthesis and cellular respiration occurs all over the place. So, continuing, involves a series of reduction reactions in which the oxidation number of carbon changes from positive 4 in carbon dioxide to an average of 0 in sugars, such as glucose. The smell of a skunk is caused by a th uh, thiol compound. In order to deodorize a pet spayed by, sprayed by a skunk, you need to convert the smelly thiol into an odorless compound. Hydrogen peroxide is a basic, basic solution acts as an oxidizing agent to change the thiol to a disulfide compound, which is odorless. So, if ever you're hanging out in the river valley, because we do sometimes get skunks, it's weird, but I think we do, more so in the country, and you get sprayed by a skunk, just use hydrogen peroxide, life lesson. Okay, one more thing. Let's summarize, and then I'm just going to show you how to use oxidation numbers in order to see if it's a reduction or a oxidation reaction, and then we're done. So let's summarize, assign common oxidation numbers. There's only a few, it's a table found on page 583, but it's also in, your, in uh, this PowerPoint. The total of the oxidation numbers of atoms in a molecule or ion equals the value of the net, net electric charge of the molecule or ion. Remember, if it's a molecule or compound, it's always zero. And if it's an ion, it's equal to the charge of the ion. So, to recap, the sum of the oxidation numbers for a compound is zero, and the sum of the oxidation numbers for a polyatomic ion equals the charge of the ion. Where do we find that? In your data booklet. Not from your head, just from your data booklet. You guys are awesome, by the way. And any unknown oxidation numbers determined algebraically, I love algebra so much, from the sum of the known oxidation numbers and the net charge of the entity. Okay, so why do we care? Why do we do this? Uh, oxidation numbers and redox reactions, we're going to take a look at what is going on with the oxidation numbers, and then we're going to say, hey, this is what's happening with the oxidation numbers from one, one ca carbon to the next carbon, it's reduction or oxidation. Let's take a look. An increase in oxidation numbers is an oxidation reaction, and a decrease in oxidation numbers is a reduction reaction. Well, let's take a look and see what the heck that looks like. So here's an example. Now, take a look at carbon, and let's take a look at oxygen. In this case here, because it's an element, it has an oxidation number of zero. This is also uh, an element, it's, it's oxygen gas. It also has an oxidation number of zero. This is true for all things like this. However, when it forms carbon dioxide, that changes. We know that oxygen has an oxidation number of negative two, and we're going to find the oxidation number of carbon, which after doing all the work that we did is plus four. Take a look at what happens. Oxygen goes from zero, oh, pardon me, in this case here, carbon goes from zero to positive four, okay? There was um, an increase in the oxidation number, right? It's losing electrons, the number is getting bigger, we call this oxidation. Here, with the oxygen, however, it starts at zero, and it goes from zero to negative two. What? It's a reduction reaction because you're gaining electrons. In this case, the number is getting smaller in parentheses, right? It's becoming more negative or smaller in a, using a number line. So we have, to use ox we have to know how to use oxidation numbers to decide if something's going through oxidation or if something's going through reduction. And then, of course, you have to know what's the oxidizing agent, the reducing agent. I know, it's so much fun. If the oxidation numbers do not change, then a redox reaction has not occurred. If there's no transfer of electrons, then nothing happens. Here's an example. Keep this in your brain. All double replacement reactions, they are not redox reactions, okay? Nothing changes. 
They're just switching of ions, but they remain ions. Just a little FYI. So let's compare reduction and oxidation so far of everything we've learned so far. So reduction, historically the formation of a metal from its ore. That's the historical definition. Okay, example, nickel 2 oxide is reduced by the hydrogen gas to form nickel metal. So that's the historical definition. Um, historically for oxidation, uh, the rea it's any reaction with oxygen. For example, iron reacts with oxygen to produce iron 3 oxide, which is rust. So a gain of electrons occurs, so the entity becomes more negative. That's for reduction. For oxidation, a loss of electron occurs, so the entity becomes more positive. Okay, let's continue to compare and contrast. Electrons are shown as the reactant in the half reactions for reduction. For oxidation, electrons are shown as the product in the half reaction. Okay, let's continue comparing. A species undergoes reduction, uh, sorry, a species undergoing reduction will be responsible for the oxidation of another entity and is therefore classified as the oxidizing agent. And for oxidation, a species that's undergoing oxidation will be responsible for the reduction of another entity and is therefore classified as the reducing agent. So, so far we already know this. This is what's new. A decrease in oxidation number is reduction and an increase in oxidation number is oxidation. Okay, awesome. Uh, let's do another example, working it through. You have seen the reaction of active metals such as zinc with an acid. Identify the oxidation and reduction in the reaction of zinc metal with hydrochloric acid. Now, chloride ion doesn't change, so it it's, remains in the reactant part and the product part. They both remain as um, ions, so it's a spectator ion. It goes away. So here's our uh, chemical equation. We have zinc plus your two, uh, 2H plus gives you zinc ion plus hydrogen gas. Let's assign the oxidation numbers. Zinc has an oxidation number of zero because it's zinc uh, metal. Hydrogen has an oxidation number of plus one because it's the hydrogen ion. Here in this case, zinc uh, ion has a charge of plus two, so the oxidation number is plus two. And hydrogen gas, right, is, is a molecule that has an oxidation number of zero. Okay, look for the oxidation number of an atom and ion that increases. We're going to see which of them is increasing as a result of the reaction and label this oxidation. There must also be an atom or ion whose oxidation number decreases, and we'll call this reduction. So let's take a look at zinc and one from zero to positive two. The number is getting larger, which means that it's losing electrons. We call this oxidation. Let's take a look at hydrogen. It's going from a plus one to a zero, okay? So the number is getting smaller. It's gaining electrons. We call this reduction. So it's kind of fun. Here's another example. When natural gas burns in a furnace, carbon dioxide and water form. Identify oxidation and reduction in this reaction. So here we have our methane. Uh, this is just a hydrocarbon combustion reaction plus oxygen gives you carbon dioxide plus water. Cool. Now determine all of the oxidation numbers of everything. Carbon has an oxidation number of negative four. Hydrogen in this case has an oxidation number of, of a positive one. Um, here we have oxygen gas has an oxidation number of zero in this case. Ox uh, carbon in this case has an oxidation number of plus four. Oxygen in this case, the carbon dioxide has an oxidation number of negative uh, two, hydrogen plus one, and oxygen negative two. So let's compare the entities of the reactants and compare them to the entities in the products. So carbon, uh, carbon went from a negative four to a positive four and oxygen went from zero to negative two. Now take a look here. Hydrogen went from a plus one to a plus one. Nothing happened. We don't count these, okay? So notice that hydrogen stays the same. It's not a re reduction or oxidation. 
So uh, an example here, to determine the determination of blood alcohol content from a sample of breath, or blood involves the reaction of a sample with acidic potassium dichromate solution, if ethanol is present, the chromium-3 ions water and the acetic acid are produced, identify the oxidation and reduction in the following chemical reaction. You'll be given this. There's no way on God's green earth you're expected to do that. However, what you're expected to do is find all of these awesome little numbers. And then, holy doodle, but they're kind of fun. You know how to do that, so it's not even a big deal. Okay, and then you compare them. Once you compare them, go, okay, what's going on? Plus 6 from chromium is going to positive 3. It's a reduction. And for oxidation, we have a carbon going from negative 2 to 0, okay, is oxidation. According to the concept of oxidation states, chromium ions are reduced from positive 6 to uh, positive 3. Carbon atoms are oxidized from negative 2 to 0. That is it. That is it. I am posting one little bit of practice along with the key. Have a great day, guys.